All right, welcome. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at the longest common substring problem, uh, which is a very simple variant of the longest common subsequence problem. So uh, really, this video is intended to mostly be uh, a video to show how we can modify the solution to the longest common subsequence problem uh, to give us the solution to the longest common substring problem. So uh, if you haven't already taken a look at the video for longest common subsequence, that was the last video in this series, please go back and take a look at that one uh, and then jump in and, and watch this one, uh, which again is just a quick variant. Okay, so uh, again, since this is a variant, let's just quickly refresh uh, the two problems. Uh, in the longest common subsequence problem, we are looking for a subsequence which is formed by deleting some elements of the original sequence. Okay, so we want to delete the original delete elements from the original sequence of A and B so that we get the same sequence, the longest such sequence, um, and that's what we're looking for now. Substring uh, relates to subsequence in that substrings are a special case of a subsequence. We have a, an additional criteria, which is that a substring must appear consecutively in the original string, and in this case, in the original pair of strings. So we have two strings coming in. We want to find a substring that is in common in both of them, and again, the longest possible one. This additional criteria uh, actually makes it a little bit easier problem. Um, and uh, since we do want to use this as a tool to study dynamic programming, we are going to solve this uh, using a dynamic programming uh, solution. Now, before we do that, we're actually going to pivot ever so slightly. We're going to realize, or we're going to try and uh, uh, come to a realization here that finding the longest common substring uh, can be sort of defined into a different problem. And so uh, let's take a look here at, at sort of the idea behind this. So let's say we have a string like this one here, substring. Okay. And we're trying to find the longest common substring of it. And let's say the longest common substring ha happens to be this one. Okay. Uh, substring. S-T-R. Okay. Let's say it's that one there. Well, what I'm going to try and show you here is that we can show that any substring like this one can be defined as a suffix of a prefix. So this thing I've defined here, this is a prefix, and then this one here is a suffix of the prefix. Now remi remind ourselves what these are. A prefix is any substring that starts the string, right? It begins at the beginning. A suffix, so we could have a suffix here, string is a suffix here, that ends the string. It's any substring that ends the string. Well, a suffix of a prefix means first take a prefix, then take a suffix of it. Well, any substring we want is a suffix of a prefix. So what that means is if we're trying to find the longest common substring, we could say, no, I don't need to find that. I need to find the longest common suffix of prefixes. Well, suffixes of prefixes. Now, the reason why this is sort of an, an important pivot for us is remember that the way that we solved the, the longest common subsequence problem was by looking at all the pairs of prefixes. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to look at all the pairs of prefixes of our, um, of our, our pairs of substrings. Okay, or our, our pairs of strings A and B. So we've got A 1 to N and B 1 to M and we're going to look at any uh, pairs of prefixes of them looking for the longest common suffix. Now let's just think of this this problem for a second. The longest common suffix this problem is actually not very hard. Uh, if we just have A and B and all we want is the longest common suffix we just start at the end of each one. We start at n and m, and we check. If they're equal to each other, good. We move on to the next one, n minus 1, n minus 1. Again, if they're equal, check. Otherwise, if they're not equal, we're done. There you go. That's the longest common suffix. It's 2, or usually it's 0 for most of our, our strings. Okay. Uh, so it's pretty easy to find, but that's not actually the problem we're trying to solve. 
Remember, we're trying to find the longest, the longest common substring, and to do that, we decided to find the longest common suffix, no, longest common suffix of every pair of prefix. That was the important bit, every pair of prefixes. So, we're not just trying to find the longest common suffix, we still need to go through the task of sort of dynamic programmingly going through all the pairs of prefixes. So, uh, let's try and do that. I'm gonna use LCS again, longest common uh, suffix in this case, but we're gonna do all pairs of longest common suffixes. So we've got ourselves an uh, N and M here. And how how does this get set up? Well, I said this, this is a variant of the, of the same problem. The longest common suffix of our two strings is still going to be zero if uh, either of our values is zero. So if either of our strings is of length zero, then, then there's no way that we have any suffix at all. So the longest common suffix is zero. Now, the other case here that's going to be easy for us, following this strategy up here, I said most of our strings are zero. Well, if the last character in our string uh, doesn't match, then we know we get a zero. And so let's set this up again. Let's say if n uh, is greater than zero, uh, this should be an or, uh, and uh, m is greater than zero, so if either one of them is greater than zero, and we'll say here that our last two characters do not match, okay, they're not equal to each other. If they don't equal to each other, then we get zero as well. So either of these cases we get zero. So that leaves us with just the other case. In this case is where the last two characters match one another. Now in this case, when if we actually just go, go back to uh, our longest common subsequence, the same logic happens. In the log long longest common subsequence, we said, well, just look, let's just trim off each of the characters. So if since they match each other, we'll take them off and we'll see what was the longest common subsequence in the last problem, what was the longest common subsequence of the remaining two strings. Well, we're going to do the same thing here. We're looking for suffixes now. If the two strings we have after we cut off these two characters that match, if they have a longest common su suffix, maybe it's zero, but maybe it's longer, we'll take that value and we'll add one to it. And this is the same recursive subproblem that we had in, in the last problem. Okay. Now, the difference is we took, we took this one and turned it into a zero. It used to be max of something, something, something. Okay max of the left subproblem and max of the of the one above. But in this case, we've just turned all those cases straight to zero. Okay, what some of you might have noticed uh, for this particular uh, recursive definition is that we don't actually have overlapping subproblems, which means maybe we don't necessarily need to do this using dynamic programming. Uh, maybe we could do this recursively. And that might be fine if what we were looking for uh, was actually the longest common suffix between our two strings. But remember, that's an easy problem to solve. We don't need that. We want the longest common suffix between all possible prefixes, so we do need to fill in our matrix. The answer is not necessarily stored in an M. It's stored somewhere in our matrix. We don't know where. So let's go ahead and, and sort of do our algorithm. Um, again, I'm going to write it here. Uh, oop, let's give it a round brace here. Let's say A, uh, 1 to N, that's one input. Our other input, B, 1 to M. Okay, and let's start out. I'm going to start out by making a declaration. Let L, and let's give it some dimensions. I'm going to say 0 to N and 0 to M uh, be a you know, 2D array. Okay, okay. I'm going to start my initialization with uh, a for loop, uh, my i standing in for n. Uh, so I'm going to say l of i standing in for n and 0 must be 0, following my pattern up here. And I'll do the same thing here, but I'll use j for my m. l sub 0 and j are equal to 0. Uh, and then we'll need our nested loops. Uh, I equals 1 to n, starting off where we left off. 
uh, for j equals 1 to m, also where we left off. And then our last bit, we're going to have to do our check. So if our two values are equal to each other, if a i is equal to be j, then we'll let our l i j be equal to, and we can just barely see it up here, this one here, uh, which is going to be L of I minus 1, J minus 1, plus 1, else Lij uh, is just 0 again. We can see that up here. It's just 0 again. Okay, but finishing off here, uh, we have to return something. We have to return. Now, the answer, as I mentioned, is not just in that last location. We actually have to take the max over some Li's, in this case, some Lij's. We want to take a max over all the Lij's. Now, I might normally want to write what I'm taking the max over down here, but it's going to get a lot. There's a lot. So I'm just going to write it here inside the set. I'm going to use a bar, or we could use a colon, but I'll use a bar here for such that. Such that what? Well, I want to put some ranges on my i. I want i's. I want i's that are in the range 1 to n. And I want my j's in the range 1 to m. Look over that. Find the maximum value. That's going to be the max what? The longest uh, suffix of prefix. So doing the max operation is allow us going over all the different pairs of prefix. Prefixes of A, prefixes of B. By looking over all the prefixes, we're finding the longest suffix of the prefixes that are in common, and that, remember, was a substring. That's the definition of a substring. So we find the longest common substring if we return this. All right, I want to complete the video uh, with a quick example. Um, maybe a quick comment before we do that, that the runtime of this uh, problem, just like the last problem, is dominated by the nested loop that we still have on the screen here. Uh, that nested loop is uh, got uh, you know it's two loops, uh, so we know we need to multiply them. They're pretty straightforward and easy to see. They're 1 to n, 1 to m, uh, so that's n times m. Uh, for the runtime of this particular algorithm, and it's fairly straightforward to see that since we have to fill in an n by n matrix. The matrix has uh, got the initial row and column filled in with zeros for us, so all we have to do is carry out the algorithm. Now this algorithm is again easier in the sense that whenever we get a, uh, whenever we get a now remember, this algorithm is actually easier in the sense that whenever we get a mismatch, uh, we get a zero in the column. We don't have to take the maximum. Uh, so that makes things a little bit easier. Uh, so let's go. We're just checking for matches or mismatches. Uh, and let's start. The first row is all mismatches, so we know that's going to be all zeros. And actually, the second row are all mismatches as well. The next two are mismatches here in this row. But we get our first match here with an N. Uh, and in, an, in a match, we look up uh, to the to the subproblem to our diagonal, uh, and we add one, so we get one. That's saying the longest common suffix of ban and mon is one, and we've now found a common substring of length one between our two our two uh, strings. Now, of course, any matching character will be a substring of length one, so we'll probably find a few more. N does not match with D or A. So we notice the 1 is not propagating like it did in our last e example. Uh, here, as soon as we get a mismatch, we're back to zeros. Well, we get another match here. 0 plus 1 is 1, uh, and back to 0. T, all mismatches, so all zeros. And again, the ones that we found here don't propagate down. That's as far of a substring as we got. Uh, if we had had here ND, we might have been able to get an ND carrying on here. Or an NA, we might have got it here. But because it was NT, no, no Ts, so we're out of luck. Okay, well, hopefully we get a little bit of luck here. Uh, so next up, um, let's continue with our A. Uh, we'll mismatch. 
match, we get 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay, mismatch, mismatch. 0 plus 1 is 1. Uh, mismatch and 0 plus 1 is 1. Okay. So we get the next row here with another 1 showing up. Uh, now, some of those 1s hopefully will trickle down. Let's continue with our n here. Uh, mismatch, mismatch. We match, we get 1 plus 1 is 2. Okay, continuing. Uh, mismatch, mismatch. 1 plus 1 is 2 again. Another mismatch. And we'll continue now on the last row. So the first one is a mismatch. We get a 0. Uh, we do get a match here. 0 plus 1 is 1. Uh, a and N mismatch. So we get a 0. Mismatch again. A uh, match here. A, uh, 0 plus 1 is 1. Uh, we get a mismatch, 0. And then finally, A match. Uh, we get 2 plus 1 is 3. Um, and the last step I'll do here is, as we see, we're going to find a max. And we actually find out that the max is here, luckily, in the bottom right-hand corner, that's because the longest common substring of bandana and montana actually is a suffix of both, both strings. So we can see here that by searching this matrix and finding the maximum value and then actually just tracing it back, we can read off ANA or ANA here to find the substring itself. Uh, that allows us to find uh, that longest common substring. Now if it's not immediately clear here that this is the longest common substring and that we do have to search the matrix, why isn't it just always in the bottom right hand corner here? Well imagine just adding an X to the end here. Well if we add an X, A doesn't match with X, we'd get zero. This wouldn't be the bottom right corner. Or X on the bottom here too. We could get a whole other row that just is all zeros. Uh, so we search for the longest, for the largest value and that's going to be the value that we're looking at. Okay, so um, this was a shorter video that I just want to show this variant of the longest common subsequence problem for longest common substring, partly because finding the longest common substring is also uh, a problem you might need to solve here and there, and here's one, one version of the, the solution for you. Uh, and uh, in our next video, we're going to continue in this series with uh, a couple of similar algorithms. Our next video, we're going to look at an algorithm to calculate what's called the Levenstein edit distance. And so that's the edit distance between uh, uh, two strings. How many edits does it take to change one string to another? So stay tuned for next video for that one. So uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you in that next video.